hello guys welcome back to my channel please if this is your first time here kindly don't make it the last time by subscribing down below thank you so much so my last update about joda and agba was how maham anga intentionally misread joda's letter to jalao and this made jalao to start thinking a lot of nonsense stuff about joda and he was thinking that after the celebration that night he would go to joda's room and make love to her because joda has already permitted him meanwhile that was was not the case so this update you're about to watch is a continuation of that keep watching Jalal comes outside Joda's room and gives the servant coin asking him that nobody should come inside inside Joda was in a sleeveless night dress and taking out her bangles and she asked Moti to help her and Jalal comes in and holds Joda's hand and Joda was shocked and she says that there was no announcement that Jalal was coming in and Jalal says that even Joda did not ask for permission before writing the letter and Joda feels shy and wears a coat Jalal comes from behind and says that Joda could have said that directly to him and Joda says that she wanted to but she couldn't and the man that she hated is now the one that she wanted to and Jalal stops Joda and says that when he first rode us his hands shivered and when he got to the throne his hands also shivered but it shivers the most when he got married to Joda and he wanted to control it to get Joda and to win her heart but he eventually lost to Joda now. Jalal has his back towards Joda and Joda holds Jalal's hand and Jalal was surprised and he turns back to see Joda and Joda smiles looking at Jalal and she caresses Jalal's hand and Jalal says that he cannot say how happy he is now after reading Joda's letter and Jalal asks Joda to tell him once that what Joda wrote in the letter was true and Joda smiley says that it was all true and Jalal was more than happy. Joda says that she wrote the letter from her heart and Jalal says that Subuano lied that it was Joda that first rejected him and accepted him as well and Joda was arrogant like him even though he is heartless but Joda says that Jalal may look heartless from outside but he is not heartless from inside and Jalal smiles and says that he wanted to say the same thing but he cannot because he is a king and he doesn't know how to say it. Joda holds Jalal's hand and says that he doesn't need to think and he should just say it. And Jalal says that he is bowing to Joda's wish and he will remove the space between them. And Jalal put his forehead with Joda's forehead. And that was when reality hit Joda and Joda quickly moves away from Jalal saying what Jalal was about to do. Jalal says that but Joda wrote it in a letter and Joda was shocked and she says that she just wanted to thank Jalal and she only think of Jalal as a friend and Jalal laughs and says that first Joda called into her room and now she is showing attitude and Jalal asks Joda from behind and says that they are husband and wife but Joda pushed Jalal away and says that she only think of Jalal as a friend and she doesn't love Jalal. Jalal again tries to hug Joda but Joda pushed him away and Jalal falls on the ground and both Jalal and Joda were shocked. Joda says that she did not write what Jalal is thinking in a letter and she comes to Jalal but Jalal shouted no. Joda says that she used to hate Jalal but from what Jalal did for Tasnim, she got to know Jalal's good side but this doesn't mean that she loved Jalal because love is a different feeling and she cannot share her soul and body with Jalal. Jalal grabs a glass piece and he was about to attack Joda but he suddenly stops and throws the glass on the mirror and he leaves the room angrily. Jalal comes outside and remembers Joda's confession in the letter and how she owed his hand and all what happened inside and he throws everything he sees away and Ma'am Anga sees Jalal and says that the storm has come. Jalal comes to the bathtub and asks everybody to go out and he gets into the bathtub and says that Joda insulted him a lot and he remembers Joda's ash words and he fiercely says that if Joda doesn't love him then why did she write that letter and Jalal says to himself that he would not forgive Joda. Maham Anga was laughing out loud and Resham asks that as Maham Anga seen an injured tiger because they fooled Maham Anga but now Maham Anga will show them what she can do. In the morning Javeda asks Ma'am Anga that why is she so happy and Ma'am Anga asks Javeda to stop her nonsense talks and Ma'am Anga comes to an economist who informs her that Monim Khan has sent gold and women that he won a war against Abu Mali and Ma'am Anga sees a big cage which has clothes on it and she asks that what is this and some girls comes forward and says that it has many qualities. Ma'am Anga asks that what and a girl says that if someone enters it then they would lose their senses. 
Ma'am Anga says, let's see, and she asks the servant to come forward, and she asks for his name, but a small girl stops him and says that he should first sneak inside the cage, and the servant does so, and he loses his senses, and he could not say his name, and Ma'am Anga smacks and says that Jala would like it. In the court, Shamshuddin informs Jalal about the political matters, but Jalal was in thought and Shamshuddin asked for suggestions, but Jalal wasn't saying anything. Maham Anga says that she knows why Jalal is not saying anything and Jalal leaves. Maham Anga comes outside and asks about the night with Joda from Jalal, and Jalal says that the reason for his happiness yesterday is also the reason why he is sad now, and he wants to talk with Rukaya and he leaves. Joda in her room said to herself that she did wrong with Jalau yesterday night and she must seek for forgiveness. But she did not write anything like what Jalau was thinking in her letter. So why did Jalau's behavior change all of a sudden? So she must talk to Jalau and she comes out of the room. Maham Anga comes to meet Joda and asks that where is Joda going to? And Joda says to meet Jalau. Maham Anga says that Jalau is busy and he seems so happy. And Maham Anga asks Joda not to disturb Jalau and Maham Anga leaves and Joda was confused. All the ladies in Arem were appreciating Raham Pande saying that he was too good and Rukaya and Javeda were also there and one of the women says that Amida has sent letter to ask Raman to sing once again and the other says that one time with his singing color of suits changed and Javeda says that she will wear blue color because she doesn't like the color so she will change and Rukaya says to Oshia that today's celebration is important to her so Oshia should get ready a good suit for her. Jalau asks for drink and shout and Rukaya comes there and asks that it seems that Jalau is in tension so she will massage his shoulder and Jalau will feel good but Jalau stops her and says that Rukaya should go because he doesn't want the massage and Rukaya sits beside Jalau and says that Jalau have the right to be angry with her but Jalau should tell her what the issue is but Jalau says that there's nothing. Rukaya says that Jalau should be angry but he should tell her what the problem is and Jalau says sorry to Rukaya for being rude to her and Jalau tells Rukaya that it all happened after yesterday's celebration and Amida comes in and Rukaya says that they will talk later about it. Amida comes in and says that everybody like Raham so she has requested him to come and sing again and Jalau agreed and Amida says that Jalau must be there and Amida says Jalau tensed and she asks that what is the problem but Jalau says that he is just tired. Maham Anga enters Rukaya's room and informs her that Jalau had wanted to go to Joda, but Joda had refused Jalau and Maham Anga wants Rukaya to distract Jalau from Joda because Joda might replace Rukaya's position. But Rukaya said that she has no problem with Joda and Maham Anga wants Rukaya of her position being threatened by Joda and Maham Anga offers Rukaya a trick that she can play on Joda, but Rukaya was not interested. Joda comes to Jalau but Jalau asks her to go away because she did not ask for permission and Joda goes out and asks for permission to come in but Jalau says never because he is busy but Joda comes in and says that she would say whatever she wanted to say and Jalau says that he still remember yesterday night and Joda also said that she also remembered what she wrote but Jalau says that Joda insulted him so he doesn't want to see her face. Joda says that Jalau was drunk and he crossed his limit yesterday and there was no love in his eyes but lust and Jalau says exactly and how can Joda think that he loves her because Joda is like any other women in Arem so what and did Joda think that she is too pretty that she will write a letter and he Jalaluddin will come running to her and Joda was odd because of Jalau's word and Jalau leaves. Jalau goes to Maham Anga to confirm that she has read exactly what Joda had written in the letter and Maham Anga says that she did not read the letter wrong and she shows Jalau the letter and challenges him to get it read by another person and Maham Anga shed crocodile tears and fakes her honesty and Jalau ends up trusting Maham Anga and Maham Anga fakes her affection to Jalau. Maham Anga requests Jalau to come for the celebration because she is going to give him a new gift in which Jalau will be so proud of and she shows Jalau a glance of the gift by removing the purple curtain covering the huge cage and Jalau takes a look at it and he was extremely happy. Resham and Maham Anga were happy that their plan is working and Maham Anga says that when her enemy is about to be hot then she has a reason to laugh. 
Maham Anga thinks of Jalau and says that Joda is also about to be hurt and she will be shown a rightful place that would give Maham Anga an immense happiness. In the all, everyone were present for Raham to come and Raham finally comes and he greets everyone and Raham asks that why should he sing for them. Amita says that Raham's live singing have colors of the whole India in Arem and they are colors from every state and they have women from the whole of India who live together. Amida continued by saying that they have one Rajvanshi and Raham greet her and Jalal comes there and asks Rukaya to sit beside him. And Rukaya sits and Jalal sits on the other side and Joda gets up thinking that Jalal will call her. But Jalal asks the soldier to bring that special person and Joda was shocked and the soldier comes out with the cage and removes the veil and a girl was inside and her face was not shown and she comes into the hall and everyone looks at her and the girl has veil on her face and the girl removes the veil and Jalal smacks. The girl was tall and beautiful and she greets Jalal and Jalal says that usually his wife do sit beside him. But today he wants his special gift to sit beside him. And Joda was odd and she sits back at her place. And Raham has his mouth open saying the lady. And Jalal asks whether the girl did the same thing that his knife did to Raham. And Raham says that he got lost for a while but he will sing today for the beautiful lady. Jalal asks the lady to come and Maham Anga introduced the lady that she is Benazir and she is famous for her beautiful look. And the lady sits beside Jalal and Raham started singing. And Rukaya thinks that yesterday there was storm and today there will be thunder looking at the lady and Joda was filming with anger. And Jalal looks at Joda and says something to Maham Anga. And Maham Anga goes to Joda and informs her that Jalal wants her to leave from there because he is not liking her presence. And Joda was very old and she has tears in her eyes and she looks at Jalal who doesn't even care if Joda is old or not. Alright, thank you so much guys for watching till the end. Please don't forget to give this video a like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to share this video to your loved ones and I will see you all again in my next video. Bye guys!